Okay guys, I'm back. And today we're gonna do a Jeep Wrangler JKU EVAP canister relocation. Because sitting right here in between the drive shaft and the exhaust pipe in the open, uncovered, isn't very smart. You can buy a skid plate for it, but it's also just as easy to do what I'm about to do. There's a little bit of hose, four clamps. I bought some hardware so that I could flush mount the bolts in the bed of the back of the Jeep so that you can still slide stuff in and out without hitting a bolt. So we'll go through all that later. It is pretty simple to take the EVAP canister off. There's three bolts. There's two up on this end, and there's one right here. So you got one here, and you've got two back here, one here and here. I took one of them off already so that I could match the bolts for that. For I can match the bolts for the uh, flush mount. You've got two hoses that you've got to take off. One here. On the filter. Let's try not to break anything. I had it off earlier, so that, that's off. Don't need that hose anymore because they'll be replaced by one of the new ones that we've got. And you've got this clip here. I got so much grease and crap up underneath there from when my drive shaft blew out that I gotta clean off. So but that's it. You got this hose, this electrical clip here, which just pops right off. And then this hose right here. So, and that's all, and that's all it requires to take this thing off. Size so three volts. So if I can figure out how to get. Okay. So I got that hose off. I got the clip off, and then this just kind of just popped right out of here. Squeeze these together, and pops right up. So you squeeze these ends together, and just slide right off. Pretty simple. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to test fit it up there, up there where I'm going to put it. I'm going to drill one hole and then I'm going to go up on top where I've already remove the carpet so that I can get to the floor floorboard and then I'll take this bracket and I'll match the one hole that I drilled from the bottom and drill the other two from the top because the bolts are going to go in from the top and then be held down by a washer and a nut a washer and a lock nut down in the bottom what I do is I got some uh, beveled flex head, beveled hex head, sorry, bolts so that they would um, kind of countersink into the, into the floorboard up on top in the trunk area. Because that's the biggest complaint that I've, that I've heard is that People don't like doing this because you got bolts sticking to the floorboard and it stops stuff from being slid in. So that's why I decided to do it this way. Give people an option. They're gonna spend a hundred bucks on a skid plate that's gonna keep it in the same spot and still possibly get damaged. You know, you can relocate it for five bucks of tubing and five bucks worth of bolts you know maybe a little bit more depending I guess but 
Max, this is a $20 relocation. I test fit it up in here, and I'm gonna drill me a hole. See if I can reposition this camera. Reposition it, but let's see if I don't knock it down. <laughs> see where that hole is at so the hole came out right here so that's how the uh, evap canister is going to sit down below so what I need to do is I'm going to take the evap canister off of the bracket and it's just held on by these three clips so I'm going to take those take these clips off Take the evap canister off lay this down and drop drop a pen or pencil whatever through here so i can drill the holes out because you would think you just lay it down there but then it would be upside down and you would drill the holes in the wrong spot we don't want that because that's what i would normally do but for some reason i thought ahead shocker so let me get that evap let me get this evap off drill the holes okay so since I am wrong often to take the evap canister off of the uh, bracket okay you've got a little clip right here I just stuck a screwdriver in here pop that clip up because it was pushed down right there and then it basically drops right off so just like that very easy simple I was about to make it a lot harder than it was <laughs> That looks like that'll work. So the bolt, the bolt that I'm going to use, I did have one over here somewhere. There it is. So the bolt, it looks just like this. So now we got that, I'm going to go and mount this from underneath. At least they're, at least they're flat. I don't think they're going to work quite as I had initially 
wanted them to, but close enough. <clears throat> so, all right, let's go mount this. where it's mounted just in front of well just in back of where the emergency brake cables attach to the up on top and I can easily slide the evap canister on there and then push this back down so that it secures it in place all good so far so good canister up in place where it's supposed to be. canister up there secured in place now I do all you got all that's left is to run those two hoses back to their connections which I'm going to place a new hose so this requires a short piece of hose and four hose clamps total so let's get that done and I'll let you see what the end product looks like all right so there's your final product JKU evap canister relocated I'm not gonna lie it was a pain in the ass because I have a custom exhaust and my exhaust pipe hump right there is a little bit higher than stock height so I had to do some creative piping which I ended up running one of the pipes up here above the uh, brake cables so that it would stay away from the pipe the other one is far enough away it's about the same distance away as it was when it was stock so should be good to go didn't have to use any any clamps any hose clamps here or here because it was just so freaking tight um, over the top of the existing hose ends so a little bit of work big payoff so I don't have to worry about I got this whole open space here now where the where the old evap used to go. There's a whole open space right there where I don't have to worry about crushing my evap canister. Up there, out of the way, not gonna hit it, not nothing's gonna hit it. Hopefully the exhaust pipe doesn't melt it. If it does, you know, we'll deal with it then. But right now, that's that's a wrap. That's a job done for approximately 15 bucks. Two feet of hose and five bucks worth of nuts and bolts. Easy day.